TV ratings don't matter at all for modern tokusatsu. Okay, bye. And we are back. Okay, th there's actually a bit of nuance to that. You see, the thing is, they don't matter as much as they used to, but you can still sort of use them as a means of gauging how many eyes you can draw to your TV show. But we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves here, so let's go back to the very beginning in 1975. Actually, let's go back just a little bit more to 1966. That's when both Ultra Q and Ultraman were airing on TV. These shows aired during the Takeda Pharmaceutical Hour, and this info is important because it paints a picture that tells you what tokusatsu hero shows were at the time. They were vehicles for high ratings. Yeah, there were toy commercials and stuff, but ratings was where the money was at. The Takeda Pharmaceutical Hour was one of the most watched blocks on TV, and was sponsored by Takeda Pharmaceuticals. They even had a snazzy little intro. Those first two shows did really well, but then Ultra 7 starts, and even though it's a huge fan favorite today, back in the day it dropped like 10% in the ratings from Ultraman. So this wasn't really seen as something strong enough to justify the creation of a fourth Ultraman series. But as we all know, Ultraman is still around. It came back in 1971 under the title Ultraman Returns, which was actually a brand new show about a character that was not the original Ultraman. It's a whole... Thing. But what does matter here is that one of the major TV stations in Japan, MBS, wanted a direct competitor to Ultraman. And that's where a little known show called Kamen Rider comes in. So Kamen Rider hangs around for about four or five years in the same time slot on the same channel before he gets the boot for lowering ratings year after year. And then it gets replaced by Himitsu Sentai Go Ranger, the very first Sentai series. The station wanted something that could produce better ratings, and Go Ranger definitely delivered. But ratings did begin to lag in the back half of the show, so it was decided that Go Ranger would end and a new show, Jaka Dengekitai, or just Jaka, would begin. However, the ratings for Jacka weren't really all that great, and in an attempt to improve sluggish numbers, Toei introduced a new hero played by Tokusatsu hotshot Hiroshi Miyauchi. Big one. He was colorful, flamboyant, and boisterous. Everything the main heroes were not. And as crazy as it sounds, Jacka actually played itself pretty straightforward. And then the final episode ends with the team using a rat missile to destroy the enemy. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Try as they might, Toei couldn't save the show and instead cut their losses, ending the show early, making it the shortest Super Sentai series to date. There would be no Super Sentai series the following year. Instead, Toei released the Go Ranger vs. Jacka movie and went to work on the Spider-Man Tokusatsu series. The formula would eventually return with Battle Fever J, which did well enough to continue with Denjiman and then Sun Vulcan. And over the next few years, things went pretty well for Sentai. I mean, ratings would drop a little bit here and there, but things like Change Man, Flash Man, and Mask Man were all pretty solid performers. And then you do sort of get to the first real extended rocky period for Sentai. We get to Live Man, and it's meant to be this big anniversary series to help celebrate everything Sentai has done. Usually Sentai will cast unknown actors as heroes, but Live Man went in the opposite direction. Daisuke Shima, the star of the show, was actually kind of like a teen idol at the time, and he had a couple of number one hit songs under his belt. Megumi Mori, who played Blue Dolphin, had risen to fame due to her role in this really popular 80s drama called School Wars, and, well, ratings for Live Man were not good. Supposedly neither were the toy sales. This leads to the intro of two extra heroes, Black Bison and Green Rhino. Daisuke Shima was quoted as saying that they weren't originally meant to be in the show, but they needed something to help improve the ratings. And it worked! The episodes following their introductions had higher numbers than the ones leading up to them. Live Man finished its run with a 10.8 ratings average, which meant it was the least viewed series in the entire franchise. For all of, like, one year. The series after Live Man, Turbo Ranger, never quite took off. It had ratings in the single digits, like, right out the gate. In another attempt to shake things up, Turbo Ranger goes through this pretty intense mid-series, almost kind of like reboot. I don't mean like minor things change, like here's a new robot or here's a new side character. I mean like almost the entire roster of villains is completely wiped out. The only remaining villains are the main villain and then Yami Maru, a rival character who's been on her hero's tails for like half the show. And this span of episodes actually sees the introduction of Kirika, who's kind of like the counterpart to Yami Maru. And then these two go on to become the main villains for pretty much the rest of the show. Turbo Ranger has a 7.6 TV ratings average by the end of its run. And I guess kind of just throwing this number out at you with no context probably doesn't mean a lot. But at the time, this marked the biggest decrease in audience from one Sentai to another. Turbo Ranger actually lost something like 3% of the audience from Live Man. 
Five Man, the next series, continued the ratings downfall. At 6.5, it was the least watched series at the time. And you're probably noticing a bit of a trend there. It was the first Sentai to have less than five episodes in the double digit ratings figures. In one last attempt to shake things up, Jetman saw the introduction of a new writer. Hirohisa Soda, who had written everything since Goggle 5, had been replaced by Toshiki Inoue, the son of Masaru Igami, who wrote the original Kamen Rider series. By this point, Inoue had written for various anime and served on several Sentai as a subwriter. And it's a well known fact, but just in case you're out of the loop, Jetman went into production with the assumption that it was going to be the last Sentai ever, unless it was a major success. So because of this, Toei promoted various individuals to try their hand at saving the franchise, including making assistant director Keita Amemiya the head director for the new show. And, well hey, what do you know it? Jetman was a pretty big success. Ratings jumped up in part thanks to a much more dramatic take on the series from the last few years, and it was also supposedly popular for having an interesting love triangle that captured audience attention, earning Sentai a bit of a fanbase beyond its typical sci-fi, otaku, and kid crowd. Over the next few years, you do see an interesting contrast of Sentai ratings going down, but toy sales continuing to reach pretty epic highs. Car Ranger, for example, was a pretty massive financial success, but its broadcast saw what was at the time one of the least viewed Sentai episodes ever. Ultimately, Sentai changes from a nighttime slot to a Sunday morning slot that it would hold from Mega Ranger's 7th episode all the way up to Q Ranger's 31st episode. This actually marks the longest period of time Sentai was in a single time slot. And over the next decade or so, ratings would ebb and flow, but they were rarely ever outright bad. However, Bo Kenger was the start of something different. Around the time of Bokanger airing, you did see ratings start to go down in a pretty dramatic and consistent way. And there's an interesting reason for this other than it wasn't a good show. Pokemon, get to the Reruns of Pokemon began airing opposite Sentai, and while reruns don't usually get the highest numbers, they are enough to slowly but surely eat away at a Sentai's viewing figures. Moreover, what seems to have been the impetus for the modern downturn in ratings was the Pokemon-themed variety show, moving to the same time slot as Sentai and Rider on a different channel. And this show often had celebrity guest stars, big info reveals about the anime or upcoming games or movies, and although it didn't have the biggest audience in the world, it was enough to chip away at some of that audience that Sentai had for itself on Sunday mornings. And this trend of lowering numbers continues until Shinkenger, which sees an increase, but then goes back down about half a percentage point with Ghostager, which continues with Gokaiger. One of the bigger issues came with Go Busters, which was promoted as the start of a new era for Sentai. There was a new look to the suits, a Kamen Rider producer was brought on to shift some of what made Rider special into Sentai. However, these changes weren't really reflected positively in the ratings. Go Busters saw ratings tank almost immediately, losing both general audiences and that all important kid demo number. Unlike Go Sager and Go Kaiger, which saw moderate drops, Go Busters dropped a full point from Gokaiger. So it's no surprise that the follow-up was this loud and colorful show, and although audience ratings didn't really improve, there wasn't that massive drop that Go Busters had. And more importantly, Kyoryuger went on to become the most successful toy line for a Sentai series in 14 years. Toy sales continued to drop afterwards, and eventually Ryder and Sentai were shipped off to a new time slot. Industry insiders claimed this move came with very little forewarning and led to anger amongst certain staff members at Toei. They weren't just angry because the shows were moved, they were angry because the shows were now moved and facing One Piece and Dragon Ball Super, which were not only two of the most popular anime on at the time, but also Toei shows. The thing is that things happened so drastically and suddenly that Toei really had no choice but to pit their longest lasting brands against each other. And that's about where we are right now. With streaming becoming more readily available in Japan, ratings don't really matter as much as they once did. But it is interesting to see where those numbers go. An episode of Lupin Ranger vs. Pato Ranger holds the distinction for the least viewed Sentai episode to date. And it'll be interesting to see if the shows ever get shipped off to another time slot, as they can have a pretty devastating effect on your show if it's not performing well. As Tsuburaya did find out with Ultraman Nexus. <laughs> 